I'd just like to thank um, Health Freedom Ohio, especially Michelle, Scott, and Nadara. Um, and honestly, there's a lot of friends that we have here. And if it weren't for you, I'm not really sure how we would get through each day. But for those of you who don't know me, my name is Roshan Golden, and I'm here with my husband, Doug, this, this afternoon to share a little bit about our beautiful daughter, Haley, who's over there. We tragically lost her 795 days ago on Tuesday, November 6, 2018. Our 20-year-old daughter was a college senior studying journalism and communications when she lost her vibrant life to vaccine-induced seizures following a meningitis vaccine for college. <laughs> These last few years have brought about a life incredibly difficult to express. However, Haley studying journalism, knowing what had happened to her, one day intended to write about her story. And so as her parents, we have felt compelled to try and be her voice. But never in a million years did I ever believe that I would be speaking publicly about the many lies told to a nation and to a world. As many of here know, vaccine injury and death is not rare, but very real. And for those who may be here and are still on the fence or haven't yet discovered the whole card, cold, hard, cold truth, we would suggest reviewing the recently published study by our dear friend, Dr. James Lyonsweiler, and his esteemed colleague, Dr. Paul Thomas. The results shared here last night are astounding. But for an overwhelming majority, the study reflects what most already know and have been sharing with pediatricians, family members, and friends for many decades. Usually when, in the last two years, when I've shared Haley's story, I usually speak to the 1986 Act that changed everything, or to the never safety tested neurotoxic products that have adjuvants and stabilizers, or to the $4.6 billion taxpayer, pay, taxpayer payout that are for those so-called safe and effective products, or to the rise in vaccines that skyrocketed from five doses to 24 with now 100 more in the pipeline, or to the fraudulent and criminal mantra of so-called informed consent. However, with the intellect and the brilliance in this room today, and the vast knowledge from many of these courageous truth tellers, you'll get everything that you need to know from them to grasp the truth. And so our hearts as parents is to speak about what is not often spoken of, the immense suffering, hardship, and agonizing loss that follows the assault of the CDC approved and recommended schedule. As parents, we trusted the pharma control narrative that has impacted more than most realize. Many natural doctors have told Doug and I that since vaccine injuries are rarely recognized, acknowledged, or even reported, many families, many families are even unaware that in their own households they have vaccine injured children or relatives. Too often, too often awakening occurs following this attack on their loved one, and the re repercussions are often devastating. Vaccine injury and death absolutely impacts the in individual. <laughs> but it also impacts the family in every single way, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, and spiritually. While walking through this confusion and the shock from Haley's injury and then death, commonplace are friends and family unable to grasp the truth and tragedy, and from that often follows denial, distance, ridicule, and then separation during the most difficult time in our lives, and while grasping to remain functioning, many like us find themselves abandoned while living with the horror of a precious loved one, one's life drastically altered or altogether stolen. <laughs> Further insult is learning that the min misinformation was deliberately approved and knowingly and would translate to harm, pain, and even death, all for the reward of power control, and money. In our own family, thank you. in our own family, we watched our vibrant daughter at just 18 years old have her entire world utterly turned upside down because of this liability-free product that we were told would protect her. I'm 
little did we know that Haley's body was already slowly filling with injected poisons after those well checks. <laughs> already living with eczema as a baby, and then allergies and on to egg asthma, never acknowledged as vaccine injuries, the meningitis vaccine proved too much for Haley's body to manage, and grand mal seizures while sleeping became part of her life. No longer could Haley drift off to sleep in peace or eat out with friends since the manufacturer's poisons can confuse a body so much so that foods can become the enemy. At 18 years old, consuming gluten, dairy, or histamine-related histamine foods often resulted in another seizure rearing its ugly head. My daughter, however, was born with a tenacious and fierce spirit. We called her our spitfire. And her many pleasures were music, theater, dancing, reading, running 5Ks, driving in her car, and collegiate sports. Haley had a spirit like no other I've ever met. And she was always telling us how funny she was, but she did that to make us laugh. <laughs> and even through her most difficult days, she still did her very best to try to enjoy the college life she had been so looking forward to. In reality, though, Doug and I knew deep down that, Haley, that all Haley truly hoped and dreamed for had been stolen, but we genuinely believed it was just temporary. In the natural world, part of our daily life now included bi-weekly visits from home, bringing specially made nutrient-rich foods, regular natural holistic appointments, a variety of healing supports that required awareness and effort, along with prayer and positive words of affirmation, became a must. Haley had begun a slow and steady healing journey since her first year, first seizure two years earlier while we were all away celebrating her sister's college graduation. A time of family celebration in reality became a time of utter horror, immense pain and mass confusion. One early morning before dawn, her sister Taylor runs screaming for help after waking to see her sister experiencing a grand mal seizure. Several days in and out of the several days in an out of town hospital, then home back in the hospital. Days later, following another seizure, we were given no logical explanation from the neurologist. In a matter of a few weeks or months, I don't remember, we soon discovered the real re reason for these unexplained seizures, which were occurring three to six times per month. And it was then that Haley's life and our family as we knew it ceased. The gut-pitting agony of watching your child suffer and her sister ache and worry is indescribable. And knowing it was because of your own misplaced trust and the intentional lies for monetary gain, there really are no words. <laughs> Haley was our youngest, and she was a sister. In the journey of Haley's battle and our deep loss, the scars are a daily reminder, no matter the situation. Taylor, Haley's older sister, sometimes at 25 years old, will share with us how difficult it can now be when somebody asks her if she has any siblings. <laughs> Taylor's almost three-year relationship with the young man was blown apart and severed because of his inability to grasp the bitter truth. And Taylor deeply aches because she now realizes that anyone else that she will ever meet will never have the chance to meet her best friend. <laughs> Nor will Taylor ever experience being an aunt or standing at Haley at the, with Haley at their weddings. For Taylor, adapting to being an only child or listening to friends complain about their own siblings and a variety of other simple tasks are no longer easy, and so counsel and support is now part of her life, as well as trying to heal from her own vaccine injuries while walking through this loss and despair. Haley was also a good friend, and she was blessed to have had many friends. And we still keep in touch with many of Haley's closest friends, and we visit with them, and we hear how much they miss her. Just last week, I received a text from a friend stating that they would like to soon meet up with us and do an outreach activity in Haley's honor. Weeks prior, a post from her closest friend read, Today is two years without my dear friend Haley. 
I've spent a lot of time reflecting today about how she impacted my life, how she made me a better follower of Jesus and a better friend. She encouraged my patience, advocated for my joy, and taught me to protect my energy. Today, like most days in the last two years, I found myself trying to tell her something or get her input. I know she'd have wonderful words to share. I'm so proud that I got to be in her life, and I'm especially grateful for her parents and sister who have loved me so well since we met, but even more so in the last two years. Haley was also a niece and a granddaughter, but as I mentioned many times, the inability to recognize and acknowledge the truth creates division. And so we're unable to now share how Haley's circumstance and our, the loss of our child has impacted their lives because we've been excluded because we speak the truth. Taylor is a wise old soul, and she reminds us often that divorce can be common in journeys such as ours. And so I'm especially grateful that Doug and I have each other to lean on. That's not always the case. For me, this journey has been exceptionally arduous. At the time that Haley began having seizures, I had been walking through my own health crisis. And so I have to be aware of a variety of triggers and reminders that are numerous, from a simple phone ring, to hearing a song, to a smell, to the empty chair at our table. Any of them can randomly bring me to tears. The loss of many old friends and family, and the insanity of the day that we're in, that we're all living in, have been especially difficult. However, we are reminded of our beautiful daughter, Taylor, who's still with us, and Haley's bravery and beautiful spirit. So we don't have a choice but to keep going and sharing Haley's message and keeping her memory alive. On this road, we've connected with countless others like ourselves, and tragically, this community is growing by leaps and bounds. We have a website in Haley's honor, and weeks rarely go by that we don't receive an email or a message from another waking up to a similar horror. And so I wanted to share just a few of the messages that we've randomly received in these last couple years. Quote, I have a video of my son before he, he was injured, and it's so obvious he was healthy. But after his MMR, the Varivax, and polio, he began stumbling, and his eyes rolled back into his head. He was diagnosed with 100 absent seizures an hour, and then soon began having grandma seizures. Another message said, we lost our first daughter to SIDS, and years later, our older daughter had the DTAP, the polio, the PZV, the PCV7, and rotavirus, and after being home 10 minutes, her eyes were glazed over. She began foaming in the mouth and turned blue. No one can tell us why she had a seizure and insisted it was only something that she must have eaten or touched. So if there's anybody here today that still doubts vaccine injury, death to be rare, I... I implore you and I encourage you to keep researching and know that the human body is quite amazing all on its own and that we have never met anyone who has researched and regretted not vaccinating. In closing, Haley had a deep love for animals. and She was loving and giving and loyal. She had immense compassion for the homeless and underprivileged. And so we are certain that Haley would want us to speak up for each and every precious life, injured and stolen. In our eyes, Haley was incredibly brave. She was a young lady of great faith. And at the beginning of the slideshow was the Lord's Prayer. Haley grew tired of journaling and decided to then every night write out the Lord's Prayer on one of her whiteboards. She also decided to stand on scripture for encouragement. And as each and every one of us walk through these days of uncertainty, I'd like to share with you the first scripture that Haley hung in her apartment. It was from Deuteronomy. If you can't read it, it was from Deuteronomy 13.6. It says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord, your God, goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. So as you leave today, I hope you will remember Leah, and I hope you remember Christopher and Haley and all these children and souls here who've been injured, and there are plenty of people I know in this room who are, have been injured and suffered tremendously. And, I, and for Haley's website, we have something we call Acts of Kindness, 
And we'll leave um, some postcards and kindness cards up on the table here. But if you'd like to visit her website, um, her older sister, Taylor, um, manages the website. And we're always trying to improve it. And we've compiled a lot of resources there for people who are just starting out. Please feel free to take a card, learn more about Haley if you'd like, and um, just pass the information along so that we can keep other people out of this horrific club. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.